Science 5 Quarter 2 Week 5 Milk Base Let's learn about Reproductive System in Plants Hello kids! It's me, Teacher Frel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit the notification bell for the latest video. You can also follow my Facebook page, Teacher Frel TV. Welcome back kids! For today's lesson in Science 5, we will discuss about reproductive system in plants. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to Describe the reproductive parts in plants and their functions. Like animals, plants are also capable of reproduction. They reproduce in many ways. In general, plants exhibit both sexual and asexual reproduction. New plants can be produced through seeds and different parts such as stem, leaves, and roots. These are the reason why you can see plants anywhere, especially in the forest, where they get good physical condition. This lesson is intended for you to describe the plant reproductive system responsible for the process, specifically sexual reproduction. The different activities that you will encounter in this lesson will lead you to understand how different parts of the plants functions in producing their own kind. Plants have many ways on how to reproduce. Some of their parts are used to produce their own kind. Do you know of any plant in your community that grows another new young plant through their leaves or stalk? For our first activity, let's do learning task 1. Study the pictures. Name the plant. Identify the part of the plants used for reproduction. Identify the name of the plant. And also identify the part used for reproduction. For the first picture, the name of the plant is... Pechai. The part used for reproduction is... The seed. Next picture, the name of the plant is taro. The part used for reproduction is the roots. And the third picture, the name of the plant is sweet potato. And the part used for reproduction is the roots. Look at the picture below. Do you know the name of this plant? Yes, this plant is a... Malungay plant Malungay or horseradish is a common plant found anywhere in the community. It has a lot of health benefits. Based on the different studies, its parts are used for medicinal purposes. Which part of the malungay plant is used to reproduce its kind? What part of plant seeds are developed? Flower is an accessory organ of the plants used in sexual reproduction. Flowers can be classified as complete and incomplete. A flower is said to be complete when it has both male and female reproductive parts. On the other hand, it is incomplete when it has only one reproductive part, either male or female. Most plants important to agriculture like corn, rice, wheat, and soybeans are flowering which means that they undergo sexual reproduction. Study the parts of a flower. The parts of a flower are Stamen It composed of anther and filament Sepal Receptacle Pedankel Obule Petal Carpel It consists of stigma, style, and ovary Flowers are parts that indicate a plant is producing seeds When seeds are produced, it means the plant performs sexual reproduction 
Different parts of the flower are involved to do such process. Pedankel, also called as pedicle, is the stalk of the flower that is important to hold the fruit. Study the picture. Receptacle is the thickened stem part attached to the pedankel and it is where the flower or group of flowers grows. Study the picture. Sepals, pronounced as sepals, encloses and protects the upper parts of the flower, especially when the flower is still a bud. Study the picture. Sepals are considered modified leaves, which means they have special function. A flower has always a collection of sepal called calyx. And now, let's do learning task 2. All plants that bear flowers are called flowering plants. Flowers are useful in the process of fertilization among plants. Below is a figure showing the parts of a flower involved in fertilization. Study the figure and label the parts of a flower. Copy this in your notebook. Give the parts of the flower. For number 1, this part is Anther. For number 2, this part is called filament. For number 3, this part is called stigma. Number 4, this part is called style. Number 5, this part is called ovary. Number 6, this part is called ovule. Number 7, this part is called petal. And number 8, this part is called sepal. The most observable part of the flower in which people normally appreciate is petal. Petals normally have different colors depending on the type and species of plant. For instance, gumamela plants produce flowers in varying colors. Petals accommodate all insects for pollination. Some flowers have three petals, while others have five or more petals. When petals are in group or by set, they are called corolla. To perform sexual reproduction, a flower has a stamen and pistil that serve as male and female reproductive organ respectively. A stamen or male organ is composed of filament and the anther. The filament is hair-like structure that holds the anther bringing the fallen grains to the position where it can be released effectively. The anther has two major lobes with pollen sacs that carries all the pollen. Pollen grains are released by the anther when they are already matured. On the other hand, Pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. It consists of several parts such as style and stigma. The style is an elongated part of the flower that supports and connects the stigma to the ovary. It extends to the height where the stigma can collect and trap pollen grains. The stigma, the one that receives the pollen grains, is a sticky and swollen structure at the tip of the style. The fluids that is secreted by the stigma enabling the pollen grains to mature continuously until they germinate. If both pistil and stamen are present, the flower is considered complete or bisexual, like rose and gumamela. On the other hand, a flower with either stamen or pistil is considered as incomplete or unisexual. Plants like papaya and cucumber produce only unisexual flowers. Sexual reproduction among plants happens through the transfer of pollen grains from the anther into the stigma. The anther serves the male part while the stigma function as the female part. This process is called pollination. There are two types of pollination, self-pollination 
and cross-pollination. And now, let us do learning task 3. Compare and contrast the two types of pollination. Use the illustration to answer the question. First, self-pollination. Number 1. In what part of the flower are pollen grains located? Very good! It is located at the anther. Number 2. In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? Very good! This part is the stigma. Number 3. How many plants are involved in the process? Correct! There is only one plant. Next, cross-pollination. In what part of the flower are pollen grains located? It is located at the anther. In what part of the flower pollen grains are transferred during pollination? Very good! This part is the stigma. And number three, how many flowers are involved in the process? Very good! There are two flowers involved. Now, let us complete the details about self-pollination and cross-pollination. Self-pollination is happens when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower in the same plant, while cross-pollination is a process that requires two individual plants of the same species. Now, look at the picture below. And let's complete the details. The transfer of pollen grains from flower A to B is called self-pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from flower B to flower C is called cross-pollination. Self-pollination happens when the pollen grain are transferred from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower in the same plant. Cross-pollination is a process that requires two individual plants of the same species. Self-pollination and cross-pollination are examples of pollen grain transferred through insects. When pollination is caused by wind and other non-living factors, it is called abiotic pollination. Fertilization occurs when swelling tube like pollen grains goes into the stigma through the style to reach the ovary. The process is complete at the moment the sperm is released from the tube to fertilize the egg in the ovule. Fertilized ovules get matured to develop into seeds. On the other hand, the ovary enlarge and develop to become the fruit. Ripening of fruits signals that the seeds are already prepared to be planted and produce new plants. Sexual reproduction through pollination is possible with the help of pollinators. Pollinators are agents for the transfer of pollen grains from a flower of either same plant or different plants of the same species. And now let us do learning task 4. Name three plants. Identify the pollinators by completing the chart below. Illustrate how pollination takes place in each flower. Draw this in your notebook. For example, the agent of pollination or pollinator is the wind. This is the drawing. Another agent of pollination or pollinator is the water. This is the drawing. And another agent of pollination or pollinator is the insect. This is the drawing. Remember, like animals, plants are also capable of reproduction. They reproduce in many ways. In general, plants exhibit both sexual and asexual reproduction. So kids, did you understand our topic for today? Wow! Good job! Kids, I hope you learn a lot from this lesson. Until our next topic, bye-bye kids! Thanks for watching!